Okay, so the topic. Got a comment a while back. It says, uh, Ahmed, can you do a video about people afraid to use references? It's quite a can of worms because uh, whenever I think about this question, there's a lot of other questions that come to mind uh, that people might be thinking of or, you know, a lot of fears or insecurities that come up because, you know, using references, is it stealing? Is it cheating? What about what about copyright? Shouldn't you shouldn't you make absolutely everything up from imagination? Doesn't everything you do have to be completely 100% original in absolutely every way? Won't people make fun of you for not being Kim Jong-gi? Won't people say you're not as good because you're borrowing information from what you see instead of inventing it all from nothing? Don't you learn better? If you make everything up, isn't it better if you only draw from imagination and never, ever, 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 ever look at life, pictures, movies, or the universe? <sighs> okay. Anyway, honestly, all the great artists who ever lived used references. Norman Rockwell photographed and orchestrated his scenes to make his illustrations, which he then projected onto a canvas to guide his paintings. John Singer Sargent had actual models pose in front of him for him to paint. While he, of course, stylizes and makes creative choices, he isn't inventing everything. And that goes for all the great masters and sculptors and painters and storytellers and musicians. Concept artists, they go to locations to photograph references to kickstart their paintings, or they buy reference packs or use Pinterest for their work. Academic atelier-style artists have models, sculptures, still lifes that they put in front of them uh, for their studies and their work. Using reference is not cheating. Stealing people's work and claiming it as your own, yes, that's cheating. Don't do that. And if you do that, you should be ashamed. All right, so there might be this idea out there that you'll become too dependent on reference if you only draw from reference, like only copying photos or um, you know movie stills or a bowl of fruit in front of you. To which I say, you know, so what? You know, some people have a fantasia and literally don't have the ability to imagine images in their mind. Are you implying that they shouldn't draw or tell stories because you might say that they aren't real artists because they're using references? Look, I mean, there's a lot of ways to learn to draw from imagination, but it's got to start by looking at things first. References. You can't just invent absolutely everything. I mean... There's so much to this topic, uh, and I'm, you, I might sound not too like happy or whatever because I don't know. I just get annoyed with like these ideas of like people gate gatekeeping of, you know, you're a real artist only if you do it this way or whatever. <sighs> anyway, uh, regarding imagination and drawing from imagination, I'll talk about that in a moment. Right after this quick peek at this video's sponsor. Hi. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallets. It's light, sleek, industrial, doesn't fold awkwardly or bulge in your pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. Most people are still using these big old clunky wallets, carrying around old receipts, gift cards, hotel keys, and so unorganized. How pathetic, I don't like it. You don't need to take up this much real estate in your pants, okay? <laughs> it holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. Got a little clip here for the cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, which is what I have. I've already gotten used to it and I can say I like it. There's over 30,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it. They'll let you test drive it for 45 days and you could send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. I mean, I've been making a lot of switches these days. I switched from a tablet to an actual screen tablet to draw on, been eating way healthier, and just my life is just slightly shifted in a, in, a, in a positive direction. And this is just one more thing to add to that. It is made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. And it is something I thought of before because sometimes you can pay by tapping your card and 
You don't want them to be stealing your money, do you? But this has protection for that. Get 10% off today with uh, free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D. That's ridge.com forward slash A-H-M-E-D and use the code Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D. The link is in the description. These numbers are secrets and don't look at them. <laughs> okay, welcome back. So, drawing from imagination. Well, that's something that could be its own topic and its own full video, and it could be a series of videos. And I'm not really going to explain how to do it or like show how to do that. Um, maybe later in like a course or something. But in order to draw from imagination, you as a existing being have to first download information into your brain. For example, if you were born on an island with absolutely nothing there except the house and endless supply of food, blah, blah, blah. You can eat and survive. And you've never seen the outside world. If I showed up and asked you to draw a car, well, you wouldn't be able to. You don't even know what a car is. But if I showed you a bunch of cars and you studied them, drew them from different angles, studied different car shapes, different styles, functions, then you're more capable of drawing a car as well as designing one from imagination. But the first part is important, introducing the information to begin with. You have to study something. Um, and you might say, well, no, 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 Ahmed, there's science fiction movies out there. And in these movies, you know, there's like these alien spaceships. They don't really exist. They're not cut looking at reference, which I would say, yes, they are one way or another. These artists, these concept artists, study things first and combine things and do ideation and exploration and the shapes that result from the initial reference gathering or inspiration becomes those designs. You can't just make everything up by starting with absolute nothingness. Well, I mean, okay, you can, but if it's not informed by something, either some kind of imagery, experience, taste, sound, smells, then it might not be something as, it might not be something recognizable as something or anything, which is still fine. That can still be art. It doesn't always have to be some kind of specific representation or defined outcome. But to sort of dispute, this is me disputing against those who say using reference is cheating. Well, using reference is not cheating. It's informing your mental library with information. Even if you copy your reference directly, like Norman Rockwell did, and, you know, he of course stylized um, his work based on the reference, but it carried all the information in a way that became his style. And style is a whole other video or topic. Um, you know, the point is he wasn't making everything up out of nothing. So it's okay to use reference. Okay, well, you might say, what about <laughs> Kim jong -gi? He draws out an entire scene with details of so many things without looking at reference. Well, he... He is someone who has collected a lot of information throughout his life. He studied very closely the forms, functions of objects, people, animals, different lenses, perspective, fisheye, uh, all to amalgamate into something like his murals and his drawings and his pen drawings and comics and sketchbooks. And you might ask, well, he also designs things and they look like nothing that actually exists, which goes back to what I said earlier. Well, that's where the designer comes into play. A designer can mix and match things, go through ideations, discover outcomes through exploration, but it, but it also starts somewhere, and that's gathering information first. You can't just assume that you have to be on an isolated island and come up with some magical, godlike, you know, uh, artwork or story or movie or game out of nothing. And if you do, cool. That you know, you might be limited in terms of what that is, but you don't have to do that. To the people, and this is me speaking to these people, who want to enforce this idea of, you're only a real artist if you don't use reference. Like, who are these people anyway? Like, wh where's, where is the committee of, of these artists or people who, who decide what constitutes a real artist and, and someone who's not a real artist. Like, seriously, who, where are they? Like, where do they live? Is, what are their names? Like, do they live in some secret mansion somewhere? Is it like a council of Elrond kind of thing? Are there magical elves, like, surrounding them? Do they have actual power over everyone and their opinion is, like, 
some kind of final thing that rules the universe? Are they master artists? Did they transcend into some hyperdimensional space-time and ascend to photonic forms, leaving behind their corporeal particles, achieving pure enlightenment to degree that their opinion of who is and who isn't an artist is some kind of godlike decree? Yeah, no, I don't think so. They're just, they're just people. Often very bitter people, broken and unresolved from their own childhoods or whatever it might be. Of course, we should all work on ourselves and, you know, become more self-aware and improve our own insecurities, etc. But there's these people who want to proclaim some kind of semblance of officiality to sit upon some makeshift throne smugly scoffing at the world to to belittle and invalidate others for not aligning with their own narcissistic declarations of how everyone must operate. They want to expand their radius of toxic dominion and feel genuinely superior to you to make up for their own feelings of intense insecurities. And the moment you let their opinion ruin your day, they feel a sense of victory a false sense of victory but they'll find any way to do it they do it by invalidating others and gatekeeping some idea of what real artists are and aren't so to that i say listen up if you make a thing you are an artist that's it you're a real artist i don't care if you're the best at it or the absolute worst you're still an artist you're still a real artist <sighs> yeah, okay. All right, well, what about stealing art? Stealing other people's ideas, stealing people's designs. Well, that's probably a topic for another video. Uh, obviously, I don't condone just copying other people's work and claiming it as your own. Although, you're still kind of an artist if you do that, uh, but we'd be moving into the topic of ethics. Personally, I'd say don't steal art and claim it to be your own. Just that, don't do that. There's a lot that can be covered on these topics, and I'm sure in the comments there may be endless permutations of, yeah, but what if blah, 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 and what if this and that, and but my teacher said blah, blah, look, dude, look, you're a human. Teenager, child, adult, it doesn't matter. You can come to your own conclusions at the end of the day as long as you're not hurting others or forcing people to agree with you. You know, you can have discussions and put opinions out there, but like this... This obnoxious belittlement and invalidation of others and, and, you know, keeping people out, of, well, trying to keep people out of becoming artists, which is the worst crime. That Your job as an artist is to express yourself, to tell stories, to feel things, to share them, to explore and discover. Don't let some random comment or opinion control or limit your expression. All right, I'm out.